1943, in Niagara Falls, New York, the Love Canal was built on an old toxic waste dump site that was previously used by the Hooker Chemical Company. The side effects from these chemicals led to a filing of an environmental emergency, but residents were forced to remain in their unsafe homes due to financial hardships creating conflict. The Love Canal Homeowners Association passionately protested, compelling the state of New York to compromise with them days later. This event resulted in the Superfund Law passed in 1980, changed the environmental movement, and raised an important question about our government. In the middle of the 20th century, environmental awareness started gaining more traction. The best-selling book, Silent Spring, by Rachel Carson, derided the toxic effects of frequently used pesticides in the 1950s and 60s. Congress and Richard Nixon founded the Environmental Protection Agency in 1970. He signed many landmark environmental laws, such as the Clean Water Act and the Endangered Species Act. In 1969, the Environmental Quality Council was founded, which resulted in the Environmental Policy Act that was passed in 1970. Incidents like smog becoming a national concern in the 70s also contributed to gaining popularity for the environmental movement, as well as the Cuyahoga River, which was located in Ohio, being so polluted that it caught fire in 1969. Stricter emission tests were introduced for cars with the Clean Air Act passing in 1970 which was when people grew interested in environmentally friendly technology. The history of the Love Canal began when William T. Love proposed Model City in 1892. His idea was to dig a canal to connect the Upper and Lower Niagara River, creating a drop-off and the opportunity for the use of cheap hydroelectric power. The proposed city gained international support, but soon after the economic recession and an invention for cheap long-distance power transportation was invented, work on the project was halted. This left a huge partially dug canal behind, and in 1947, the Hooker Chemical Company bought the area and decided to use it to dispose of their toxic waste. By 1952, 22,000 tons of mixed chemicals had been disposed of, placed in metal drums that were buried in the partially dug canal, and later covered with a clay cap. At this time, it was common practice to be irresponsible with waste disposal, and that's what the Hooker Chemical Company did, due to no laws in place regulating the issue. In 1953, Hooker then sold the property to the Niagara School Board for $1, including a disclaimer about the chemicals buried there. In 1954, a school was built and house lots were sold right over the covered landfill, without the seller notifying the people about the toxic past that lay beneath the sprawling town, due to the lack of a law that allowed the landowners the right to know. The residents of Love Canal lived for decades, not knowing the problem they were about to face. Around 1974, heavy snow and rains broke down the metal barrels that Hooker Chemical had placed, making the chemicals leak everywhere. Parents soon started to notice unexplained abnormalities in their children. Kids would come home with rashes from a game of baseball on the grass. I kept taking him to the doctor and asking the pediatrician, and he had no clue. He's like, you know, God gave you this child because you're one of these moms that he knows will take care of. It's like, no, God gave me a healthy child. Something is making him sick. In 1978, after numerous resident complaints, the New York State Department of Health sampled the air, water, and soil of Love Canal and found 82 chemical compounds, of which 11 were known animal carcinogens and one unknown human carcinogen. In April of 1978, the New York State Department of Health dug up the chemicals buried in the ground. An environmental emergency was filed by the Environmental Protection Agency and only pregnant women and infants were evacuated, still leaving many concerned residents behind. We want we want many parents living in the Love Canal tried to get their children transferred out of the 99th Street School However, the superintendent wouldn't allow it because other parents would probably follow and the school would have to close. So Lois Gibbs, one of the concerned parents, started the Love Canal parent movement in June of 1978. Protests sprung among Love Canal residents, the media covered it, and the whole country seemed to be involved in the issue. The Love Canal Homeowners Association was established in August of 1978 to give the community a voice in the decisions made 
during the Love Canal environmental crisis. They protested to get funding to leave the toxic area that was considered an environmental emergency by the Environmental Protection Agency, which only evacuated pregnant women and infants. Finally, in 1981, all of the residents of Love Canal got funding from the state to leave. After residents finally got funding from the state to leave, the lawsuits came rolling in. The state of New York and 1,400 individual residents sued Hooker Chemical. These lawsuits addressed the side effects of the chemicals, including benign tumors, learning disabilities, birth defects and miscarriages in pregnant women, leukemia, anemia, lymphomas, paralysis of fingers, respiratory and cardiac arrest, visual defects, deafness, respiratory distress, liver tumors, double rows of teeth, and even death. A lot of these lawsuits were successful, with all of the residential suits adding up to about $20 million. But the residents were left without money they were hoping to get to be able to study the chemicals found at Love Canal. Even today, many of the chemicals found in Love Canal are still not fully understood. We have a good understanding of, of what the possible effects are, but there are there are emerging chemicals that we're still kind of working with and trying to understand what those potential effects are or long-term effects. The out-of-court settlement between New York State and the Hoker Chemical Company regarding the issue about who is responsible for the Love Canal situation was reached June 21, 1994. Hooker Chemical agreed to pay $94 million to take on cleanup work that would extend for decades. The Love Canal might be thought about negatively today, but its legacy includes positive outcomes including the enacting of Superfund and the changing direction of the environmental movement through grassroots movements. Superfund is a United States federal government program created by Congress and signed by Jimmy Carter. It was designed to fund the cleanup of sites just like the Love Canal that were contaminated with hazardous substances and pollutants, and to go after the responsible parties. Superfund is still in effect today, and there are thousands of sites across the U.S. This is important especially because today, flooding has increased around the U.S. due to global warming, and that can increase the chance of chemical plants flooding and contaminating areas around it. During the time of the Love Canal incident, it wasn't required to be transparent about the history of the property being purchased. The success of the Love Canal homeowners changed that. There is now a process in place that people have the right to be told what the property is built on and they can decide to buy it from there. The Love Canal also helped to turn the already existing environmental movement into one that is more focused on local issues through grassroots movements. Love Canal was sort of the, the, the poster child, if you will, of the, of the initial start of this grassroots environmental movement. Communities were inspired by Lois Gibbs' work and decided to fight for their rights too. I can't tell you how many people have called us and talked to us about the inspiration that Lois provides, especially as a woman, um, to, to people around the country. Noting this, citizens have to do a lot of work to result in little change, making us question the way our government works altogether. Alan Schneeberg, working in the Department of Sociology at Northwestern University, states that perhaps the legacy of the Love Canal is the need for rethinking our political structure and not just our voluntary non-governmental organizations. This could be partly due to the lacking of progressive political party. This event resulted in a better plan for disaster in the future. The Love Canal Homeowners Association passionately protesting is an example of what happens when citizens speak their minds and work at an issue until it succeeds. The Love Canal incident helped lead to the Superfund law passing in 1980, changed the environmental movement through grassroots movements, and made us question our government as a whole.